second stage for the affirmative saying that winners can't have it all, Judy Reed, Taryn Dean and Ruth Diamond. And of course, to the negative, saying women can have it all, we have Petrina Zappa, Bridge from Gold FM and Shannon Willoughby. Are we ready, girls? How are we going? We good? Where's my bell? Have we got a bell? Is it under there? Under the lectern. Under the lectern, deep in time. Under the lectern, deep in time. Under the lectern, deep in time. Under the lectern. Sorry, I'm not doing very pop. I don't know. I don't often break into the singing that number, but. teachers, nurses, secretaries, and then they got married. For most of them, that was the end of the career and the beginning of housewife, mother, carer. I'm a product of that era. And I had a mother who made my clothes and my lunches, walked me to school, listened to my stories, volunteered at tuck shop, comforted my bruises, real and imagined. Mum was ducks of her school, and a laboratory technician who encouraged me to learn and be whatever I wanted. But in the background, there was the chant of, until you get married. Then along came Jermaine Grigg and the feminist movement. Bras were burnt, sadly not mine. <coughs> and the pill gave us the power of control over our body. An equal opportunity has its beginnings. And Helen Reddy said, I am woman, I can roar, so roar I did. I've much to thank for those times, an interesting and varied career, increasing access to funding as a business owner, daycare for my children while I worked, and the idea 
that if your relationship wasn't working, do something about it, which I did, twice. <laughs> I might add that my husband, he gets introduced these days of, have you met my current husband? <laughs> it keeps him on his toes. The female roar, the female voice began humming to the tune of, you can have it all. And we all followed along without really thinking about it. So what have I given up these years without even noticing? Painting, playing the piano, dancing, healing, time for reflection. A my sense of wonder at small things, spontaneity. You've heard my list. So what have you discarded in your race to have it all? Or are you just too busy to notice? I'm sure the other side will tell you that you can still have it all. How many of you have diary sex? You know, the nights when you're both home at the same time, you check the calendar on your iPod, and you'll even have enough energy. It never used to happen that way, did it? So what's the effect of having it all on our health? My friend, Sambo Patrick, who many of you may know, writes on the rising incidence of higher testosterone in today's working women. To quote Sam, she is often fast paced, not fluffy, competitive and driven, likes working with goals and outcomes, a high achiever and often stressed. Although she may not admit to the stress, nor to the high achiever part, her time management is usually crammed full and many look at her schedule and go, wow, how do you fit it all in? This is especially true if she's juggling children, exercise and a social life. Does this sound like anyone you know? And maybe all of you. It certainly describes me and my life. According also to Sam, the combination of increased stress levels, adaption to competitive male work environments, and more fast high carb foods are increasing testosterone in women. And they're causing issues of infertility, facial hair, acne, and all these other things. Is this what we really want? So how do we have it all? We meet now over coffee, not lunch. We email instead of writing letters. We send texts instead of calling. We shop online. We fit friends into our busy schedules. We have courtyards with paving instead of gardens. Our days are busier, fuller, and faster paced. And so we look for ways to fit our personal lives into the ever smaller spaces. Wage levels for women are still lower than men's in most comparable positions. Representation of women on boards is 20%. There's still an imbalance in the number of women in high level corporate positions. Most mothers are busy working to fund the purchase of their home. Daycare places are inadequate, poorly funded, and often too far from their workplace. The battle continues, but are we still willing participants? Women are leaving corporate life in droves to go home, to, to run a, a home-based business, to regain their flexibility, space and creativity. That's where we operate best. We're taking back control of our lives and saying to the world, we've learned that we can't have it all. In fact, we no longer want to have it all. So we're going to take the best parts and blaze new trails and leave the dregs for men. A big hand for Judy Ray. Yay! That's right, girls. We don't want it all. We could, we get it all, we could have moustaches, huh? Oh my God. Watch out, moustaches and health problems. So you watch out, there's a good point coming in there. So that's fine. Be very careful. I do have a little, a little tip though. I, um, if anyone here is looking for love, because it's uh, often hard, um, when you are an assertive woman, to find a man that you can impress. Um, <laughs> who hasn't noticed? Um, and who has a credit card with actual credit on it? Uh, so what you need, girls, if you're looking for the perfect man, you need a man with a lot of money, you need a man that can cook, and you need a man that's really good in the sack. But the most important thing is that those three men don't meet. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Katrina Zappa. Celebrity. So don't be surprised if you feel you already know her. <laughs> <laughs> 
Katrina. Thank you very much, we meet again. Well, I am here to convince you that we do have it all. Absolutely. Now, what it actually means, though, about having it all means different things to different people. I mean, to one lady, it might mean having the amazing genie bra in five different colours. And if you're lucky, you might get one of those little clasps that turn it into a racing bag. Or perhaps a zebra print snuggie. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can say are successful. But I decided the best way to illustrate a woman who has it all Exhibit A. I have it all. Thank you. By the end of this, you will agree with me that we all have it all, and you will despise me. I'm sorry. All right, I've been a news reporter for almost 30 years. Let's be honest, I'm pushing 50. I'm still on the road. There are not many of us left on the road. So I get to produce the news as well, which is wonderful. So I'm moving up into that little management position at the same time. I've been married to the same man for 27 years. I know, he still likes me. It's funny. And I have three teenagers who still talk to me. I mean, come on. This is one up the back here, my daughter Kashmir. She's even come along to support us this evening. Uh, apart from that, I'm a Cancer Council Queensland ambassador. I am a, a lecturer in broadcast journalism at Bond University. I run my own two family companies and I have a string of six costume characters that I created because I wanted to give something back to children to get them away from the computers, get them out singing and dancing and just being kids again. So I really believe that we can have it all. But how did I get it all? Ah, was it handed to me on a silver platter? No, I've had to fight really hard. And when Sir Joe Bjorki Peterson said to me, go away, little girl, stop asking me hard questions as a cadet, I thought I can either sit down and cry, or I can ask him even harder questions, which is what I did. Perhaps I got this everything because I slept with the right person. <laughs> you often get that in this industry, but no, sorry, not my style. Maybe it's through hard work and commitment and actually following through with my goals. That could be the idea. They say that women have got three lives, a public life, a private life, and a secret life. Would you agree? Now the secret life is that little bit of money that you keep back so you can go and have a facial, you can go have lunch with the girls, have a bit of a chat, and therein lies the key to having it all. Having a chat with your girlfriends and having that support network at work, at play. That's one thing we girls do very well is communicate. So if you've got that as a backup, you can have it all. You can go and chat to them if you've got a problem. If you remember in Crocodile Dundee, when uh, Linda Kozlowski and Paul Hogan are talking and she says, I've got this friend who goes to a psychiatrist. And he says, why do you need to go to a psychiatrist for it? She said, you know, talk about your problems, work things through. And he said, doesn't she have any mates? And it's so true. If, you know, girls especially, if you've got that networking at work through different organisations, you're laughing, you can have it all. Now, there's always going to be somebody who's more successful than you, less successful than you, prettier than you, less attractive than you. So you don't have to be in competition with the whole world. It's too big a place. The only person you have to be any better than is the person that looks at you in the mirror every day. You don't need to stand on anybody else to achieve those goals. So why do we do it? Why do we push ourselves? Why do we strive so hard? Well. I think we do it because we want a better life for ourselves and we want a better life for our family, of course. But I'd like to think that there's a bit of nobility in that and we make it easier for the next generation of young women coming through. So we go through it, put all the hard yards in and then they can take the benefit from that. So I'd just like to leave you with a quote from, you know, a little journalist up here who's seen a lot of things in her 30 years and basically, I think we can have it all if we give it our all. Thank you very much. Oh, there you go. There's a woman who's not afraid of asking for what she wants, huh? I've got to work on my self-esteem. That's right. <laughs> I love that. You take those in the bedroom to your husband. Cheers. Compliment. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
talking to my 16 year old daughter who's sitting in the audience. People who know my husband are sitting in the audience. Oh, so, that's right. Double, 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 I didn't think they're nuts. I thought someone else called their kid on a typical. And at the, at, at the daycare, what they do is discriminate between, not discriminate, you know, tell the difference. <laughs> tell the difference. They go, they use last names, like, and they use the initial. So they were calling my daughter, her last name's Stephen. That's how I can tell which dad belongs to who. Um, otherwise, I'm not which one. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember that sort of stuff. It helps when I get my dementia. I think Stephen. No, it's IDX, right. I turn up, no joke, at, at the daycare center. I hear this woman yelling out to the other Ivy, took the daycare, IDF, IDF. <laughs> Can I do that? Can I be in a daycare centre yelling at some kid in the crowd calling her IDF? My name is Ivy Fisher. Yeah, then why? I'll be IDF. It's like saying IDF inside your expenses. <laughs> Another dirty little sex kids. <laughs> Cheap little buggers they are. Sorry, that's just sitting there. I've forgotten about that. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, and thanks for coming tonight, gentlemen. I really do appreciate here. I have to say, it is a sign of a man and a little bowl. Who will get late tonight? <laughs> Showing they are sensitive and supportive. <laughs> um, and really into listening to women talk about how good we are. <laughs> As if they don't hear that enough. <laughs> oh, let's get those lectures. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your second speaker saying that women can't have it all is Taryn Dean. Taryn? She's also described as witty, wise, and matter of fact, funny, feminine, practical, and upfront. Oh, if you're on an RSVP profile, I would look you up. <laughs> <laughs> I have no answer for that <laughs> because I can't have it all. I just can't have a witty response to a comment like that. It's just not possible. But you see, I believe, along with this great team of women and my esteemed colleague over here, Petrina, who so eloquently endeavoured to put forward her argument that she's created a great foundation for me to build on. You see, I have it together, but I don't have it all. You see, I almost wanted to bring my role on back. I've spoken here today twice. It looked like I came with a trailer. When I started out as a growing up, I used to take a handbag, then I, then I graduated to a TARDIS. Now I actually take a 25 kilo suitcase with me when I go to give presentations because I know for sure I can't have it all, but I'm going to darn well make sure that I'm prepared as best that I can. You see, today um, I've brought a few things. Do you mind if I bend down? Is that okay? So I'm going to go like that. And see, I think what, what the negative team are going to do over here uh, girls, yes, we believe in helping each other too, but we still put forward our case that we can't have it all. So, girls, can you just somehow untangle that and can you go over here to the negative team because you see, they're going to tie themselves in knots to put forward their arguments that they can have it all, but we believe firmly that you can't. You see... Well, don't hurt them though. Be, be, nice. be nice. You see, girls, there are two kinds of girls. There are two kinds of girls. There are the girls that will come alongside each other and help each other out. And then there are the ones that aren't quite so confident. And our mission is to give those girls permission to make mistakes and to accept that they can't have it all. Because it is a fact that we do sometimes fall into the trap of comparing ourselves one to another. Her hair's... I was going to say red, but I can't. <laughs> her, hair's, her hair's 
yellow today. I want yellow hair. <laughs> so nice. She's so tall, I'm so short. He's, he's awesome. So is mine. Mine, mine is. My husband is awesome. My husband picked a girl who didn't have it all. He picked a girl who said she's comfortable in her skin and she accepts she can't have it all. So if you could, for a moment, just turn to the person next to you. Oh, hello. You have someone in our class today. Fantastic. Turn to the person next to you and I want you to lift up your left hand, please. Close it into a fist. Don't hit them. <laughs> I just want you to, like, turn your body slightly so that you're both going like that. Okay? No, don't... We're not very good at instructions. See, we can follow you. We, we can't. Oh, look, he's good. This is good. Can I please ask you to just stand up as our role model? They've tried to have it all, but they didn't quite get there. But what they've done is they've shown the power of unity. So, turning to the person next to you, I want you to join, join your fist. And boys can do it too. Well, maybe you know, man, in a manly sort of way. You may sit, girls. Thank you. So, what we've done, so releasing that down now. Okay, there's another thing that I want, I want you to try. So, you have a distinct advantage. Men don't generally wear heels. I, however, am wearing heels today. Some girls are wearing flatties. You're all very prepared and stunning. Here's what we're going to do. See, girls can't have it all. We try and tone our thighs. We try and tone our butts. We try and tone our tuck shop arms. We try and speak eloquently and sometimes we don't. But what you're going to do for me today, without knocking over the beautiful caterers, if you have room and there are no trip hazards, this is a disclaimer notice, <laughs> if there are no trip hazards, I would like you to semi-rise from your sitting position. So you're sitting like this, yes? I would like you to clench your buttock muscles. This is, this is not television, this is active participation. So I actually need you, gentlemen, and cross your legs, please, everybody who's physically able to and desiring to contribute, please rise from the sitting position into a half squat. You know people on television have bottoms too. <laughs> but no, but that means don't watch, participate. This is, my girls can too. If you're not knees, we'll hold up, girls. So what we're doing is we're holding that for a moment. Now, with your spare hands, Put it up and declare with me. Girls cannot, let's hear it. Girls cannot have it all. Girls cannot have it all. I want to hear a bigger sound. Girls cannot have it all. Perfect. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We, the affirmative, agree that girls cannot have it all. And try as they might, the negative team will come forward using a plethora of ruses to sway you in the opposite direction, but we know you are people of integrity and great character, and that you will hold fast to your declaration because you have now a great crowd of witnesses. You have declared in the squatting position, girls cannot have it all. To counter that argument and your physical involvement and commitment would be actually going against your own ethics and your own words. So I want you to consider very carefully your decision when the clapper meter comes around. Thank you. <laughs> Put your hands together for Karen there. So when they can't have it all, a very powerful example of, I think, isn't that the position you go in in the toilet when it's a bit dodgy? Right? And, then, and you go, I have to do the hobble way, the hobble way. Yeah. Did anyone know if they've got a bit of a weak core and that's why you need to go to Perth, then go to Pilates, not be a figure, but for the hobble way. Um, sorry, girl. Uh, I just realised I was giving you a little bit too much on the hobble way. Uh, you can see, see really my whole point of going for the hobble way. But anyway, you do need to activate your core. Oh, we went to my Pilates class. I don't know. You look like you've got a good sense of humour. I went to my Pilates class recently. And she's gorgeous, my instructor, but she doesn't have much of a sense of humour. She's very pretty. She's like 27. She looks, you know, it's too depressing when you've got a teacher that's that, that good looking. She goes, okay, can you activate your core? And I went, cool. <laughs> 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 that was a restraining order. Um, <laughs> ladies and 
and squatting. That was just odd. Did that feel uncomfortable for you ladies to say we can't have it all? Sure, yes, thank you. Of course we can have it all. Is that Taryn or Kyle Bloody Sanderlands? Who are you? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, that was ridiculous. Of course we can have it all. I mean, I think I'm going to grow my armpit hairs during this. I can feel it. I can feel it. They are. They're growing as we speak. But look, look at it as life is like a sizzler or you can eat buffet. Okay, look at it this way. You can choose and create the life you want. You can define what it means to have it all in your own terms, all right? So you can pile on your plate whatever you want. You can live on the edge and have dessert first. Or, you know, if you want to, you can try those wicked crispy potato skins. You know, you love those ones. You can try them. You can have five different plates. You can go your cold meats or you can pile it all on top like Mount Vesuvius and negotiate your way through it. If life was like an all-you-can-eat buffet, there is no way a woman would just taste test a garden salad. You can choose the life and define what it means to have it all in your own terms. And we want it all. We deserve it all. We devour it all. And women, we definitely can have it all. And the only thing that stops women is their own self-belief. My mother taught me, she was very inspirational to me, she said, Bridge, you know what? If you just make one person laugh on the radio, you're really shit at your job. <laughs> but no, she, that was, that, she shouldn't have said that to me. No. I had some counselling about that, but no, what she, she really taught me was she was an incredible woman. She was a single mum of six girls and she was, a, she was a nurse as well and she would come home every night after work, she would cook for seven people, she would do a thousand loads of washing because we're girls, of course we wear different outfits every hour. Um, she would... She would do the washing, she would do the ironing, whilst teaching me my times table. She was our netball coach, she was our tuck shop lady. She would darn my socks, she would sew my split lip, and she could fit in a game of tennis with the girls on a Wednesday. And my mother was so good at tennis, she was as good as that as she was at wielding the wooden spoon. And I tell you, the day she got tennis elbow, we were very, very happy. <laughs> and, but we all, but I tell you what, my mother, and her name is Queen Colleen, and she would leave a large red welt on your bot bot if you ever said to her that she couldn't have it all. And she learned this off my grandma, who thrived on a challenge. My grandma, she could fix a car, she could drive a tractor, she could ride a horse. In fact, she could knit a queen-size blanket in an afternoon. I gave my grandma a challenge once and I gave her a ball of steel wool and she knit me a fly screen. <laughs> this is what women can do. We are absolutely amazing. And, and I can't good stock. I survived when I started off, I was a bar manager and then I went into stand-up comedy and as Mandy knows, all male dominated industries. I did a bit of TV and then I ended up in the boys club of radio and I'm telling you, I can make my boss cry from zero to tears in 0.25 seconds. And what a lot of people don't know is I'm also an ANDRA member, which stands for the Australian National Drag Racing Association. I've got a charger, a V8 Valiant, 318 Hemi, four barrel, beautiful machine. And I used to take on the boys and I used to drag them on the airstrips up north. I was the only girl and all the blokes when I'd beat them, they'd go, oh, you're just a lesbian. <laughs> and I'm like, well, if you're all that's on offer, I think I bloody will become one. <laughs> that you can have it all and manage this on your own. Female needs support groups, this is extremely vital. We need our girlfriends, we need our mums, we need our sisters, we need our work colleagues, we need our psychics, because God knows if I should stay with this bloke. <laughs> we need our Sex in the City box set, we need our Eat, Pray, Love Bible, and most importantly, the most important thing that we need definitely is our liquor land and our BWS. Yeah. And guys, what you need to understand, the pursuit of having it all, we're often way too tired for the ufty magufty. <laughs> so when you tap it, tap, tip, tap, tap, tap with a certain appendage in the middle of the night, please understand, Captain Caveman, that I've got a headache code translates to, in the pursuit of having it all, that doesn't not mean having it off. 
save your breath, you need to blow up your girlfriend later. Um, look, I, I hate it when women say, I'm just a mum. You have 40 different jobs. Your mothers, teachers, carers, disciplinarians, lifesavers, chefs, counsellors, cleaners, tutors, bakers, iners, seamstresses, time management and organisational gurus. You're porn star actors. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, baby. That's right. I do it like that. You know, I love it. You're really doing it this time. Ooh. You know we are. And I took the taxi drivers, we're dentists, we're soccer coaches. We can make a grown man in the boardroom at work cry, then comfort your teething, screaming toddler in the afternoon and soothe your teenager's broken heart at night. And not surprisingly, women invented the cooking stove, the fridge, the dishwasher, the ironing board, Kevlar, circular saws, scotch guard, fire escapes, liquid paper, windshield wipers, life rafts, and the first software for computing. A lady has also recently developed a self-cleaning house. Did you know this? But the blokes in the office will never let her receive a patent, and that is the truth. And finally, if I can cue some music, Mr. Music, because I'd like to finish in a bang. Oh yes, where's the music man? Am I relying on a man? I'm relying on a man. There is no music? That's right. That's okay, everyone, because in a situation like this, you can always rely on females to help you out. So women, cue the music, Ms. Music. I am woman. Follow your passions. Design a rich and balanced career and family life. Have the courage to ask for what you want. Do it with a sense of humour and have the confidence to know you deserve to have it. And one final thing. Ginger Rogers did exactly what Fred Astaire did, but she did it backwards and in heels. Thank you. Watch out. Well, I've worked out you guys. I've worked you out. Know what you're all about. Well, um, I'm going to start off by saying the obvious. I'm here to tell you that women can't have it all. And however, I think of the words, women can't have it all. What does it mean, as Petrina said? It means different things to different people. When our Governor General Quentin Bryce was asked, can women have it all? She responded with, yes, you can have it all, but not at the same time. <laughs> and I actually agree with her. I also agree with Cherie Blair, wife of Tony Blair, who runs the foundation for women who said it's a myth that members of our sex can have it all. <clears throat> so I question what women really want. There are things we want and can't have and things we don't have and do have. And I'm sure by the end of this debate, you'll all hear the struggle of women balancing work and family. However, for the moment, I'm going to talk about my favourite subject, women and sex. I actually need more than five minutes. <laughs> I want to show you that women can't have it all. Now, I have to say, Katrina, I admire everything you said about yourself and I actually think I equate to everything you said. I also think I'm a woman, I used to think I was a woman, I had it all. I'm married, same man sitting over there, 51 years. Woo! Yes, and I still love him. All those gorgeous men over there are my sons. All those beautiful women over there are my daughter-in-laws. I have eight grandchildren. I have a successful practice. You I'm on radio, people. television, I write books, I lecture. Do I have it all? No. I'm part of 99.9% .9 of women that has never experienced a simultaneous orgasm. <laughs> Nor have I had multiple <laughs> orgasms. What are you doing down there, Don? So do we really have it all? Go to the job. My sons over there are turning red. They actually didn't want to come here tonight. <laughs> Good choice. Did you all say, and I'm very mindful of my sons in the audience. So, did you know that 70% of women would die to have a penetration with a happy ending instead of the other word? Organ. Okay, that's right, that's huge. That means 30% of women only experience that. 
Another statistic. Wouldn't we all love to have our man two feet long, made of steel and go all night? The average Australian bloke <laughs> does 11 thrusts. I'm actually being a bit mean. It's actually 12, sorry. <laughs> Wouldn't we all, we would all women love to experience 600 sexual positions? That's what the Kama Sutra says. Did you know that? We all would. But most of us only experience three. Oh, hold on, what's that? Oh, there's a guy over there who wants to know what the other two are. <laughs> so you guys getting it? You have been getting it? We really can't have it all, can we? Okay. So I'm going to take sex out of this discussion for a minute and talk about the problems I hear every day in my room. Generation X women actually have it tough. They start off believing they can have it all. They have very different expectations to their baby boomer mothers. The women from the baby boomer generation had clearly defined roles. They were the homemakers, hubby was the breadwinner, and they accepted their roles quite happily. Many of these women proudly stated that they were stay-at-home mums, not just a housewife. Oh my God. Some were happier than others, particularly if their partners were caring, handed over their paychecks every week and both shared the role of doing the male and female thing with their children. These women believed they had it all. They were happy with their choices, healthy, no, press food, no processed food in those days. They had simple fun like barbecues with the neighbours, family dinners, get-togethers and didn't worry about political, political correctness. However, they were equally, there were equally as many women at the same time not happy with their lives. They were doled out money every week and they had to explain every penny they spent. Many were not allowed to be themselves in their relationship. These women subsequently gave their daughters the message never to rely on a man financially. Be your own person, get a career, be financially independent. So their daughters, Generation X, took their advice and became career women. They believed they had a right to have it all. They could have careers, marriage, partners, children, be happy, healthy and have fun along the way. This generation also decided not to be like their mums. Many, many saw nurturing as subservient, so they decided nurturing was for their children, not their partners. However, they did, as they changed, so did their partners. In order to survive this new generation world, the hunter-gatherer male became the sensitive new age guy. And many looked at their chauvinistic dads and said they would not be like them, so they agreed to come home work, uh, from work, change their nappies, bath the kids and cook dinner on alternate nights. This worked okay for a while until the idea of sharing turns into a business arrangement and becomes more like a tip for that tax story than sharing. This is how it goes. Both arrive home at the end of the day, tired and grumpy. He doesn't really want to cook dinner tonight because that's his father had dinner on the table every night. And she's feeling angry and sad and guilty because she had to hand over a nine-month-old screaming baby to another teacher. That means I'm over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, subsequently, I'm going to wind up. So, subsequently, over time, women who think they have it all actually realise very quickly that they don't. And they, they realise that it's just hard work. And when this happens, sex goes out the window, by the way, as, as we see. And you girls... Actually, uh, Bridget said that sex, you know, no more, what was the word? Gufti magufti. Oh, no, oh, no, we're off to gufti magufti. That's what happens. No more gufti magufti. Because they, they can't do it all. That's exactly it. So, I'm going At to... the risk of, of saying something. Um, interjection. Yes, I'm interjecting. Because she's making assumptions that we don't have sex anymore. Um, we and that's have... not good for our reputation. That's not right. very often, according to the people that Well, how often is not very often? <laughs> Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, summing up, I believe women can't have it all, but perhaps they can come close to it and they focus on and embrace what they do have and not what they don't have. Excellent. Yay! I've been hand for Ruth, and I'd just like to just assert the fact that quite possibly they all probably have sex a lot. Um, <laughs> They don't, or they don't, or they, some of them have a little lot, and some of them don't. It is, it is a very good point, Ruth. It was, look, she's taking the microphone and said, oh, this is she's going, that's it, I'm taking the microphone. <laughs> I had that happen 
buffering, I was actually at Canteen buffering a bread roll, right? The same thing happened. And, and you know, it's where I live, it's a gluten free bread roll, of course. Um, <laughs> oh, God, your mother bid me, nothing else would be good enough for those kids. No one can tolerate gluten, oh, I swear up. Right? When they come over to my place, don't I give them a lot of gluten? Because I'm actually gluten intolerant, intolerant, I can't tolerate gluten intolerant people. <laughs> singer, uh, I'm not a life coach, I'm not a meditator, I'm a print journalist, so forgive me, my speech not, may not be as entertaining as some of the ladies who's been up before, but that doesn't mean I can't have it all. I wake up every morning, I get up and go for a jog, I then come back, I feed my 18 month year old, I have breakfast, get ready for work, I read the papers, I write a few emails, I put a makeup on, I probably take a few calls, this is before 8.30. Then I go to work. Sometimes I stop for a meeting. I'm president of the Young Professionals Gold Coast as well, something that also keeps me very busy. Then I get to work. As chief reporter of the Gold Coast Bulletin, I never know what my day entails. Uh, it could be meeting the Prime Minister. I was in Canberra this week for the federal budget. I covered the council elections the weekend before. I also covered the bikey shooting in between the council elections. This was my weekend. Uh, this is what I love doing and I wouldn't choose to do anything else. Uh, so to say that um, some of the women from the, uh, the, the other side have said that women uh, say they're having it all, they're sacrificing things that they don't love doing. Well, I don't actually know what I'd love doing if I wasn't covering bikey shootings. <laughs> and excuse me, I'm just gonna check where I'm at. Sometimes my day I just entails sitting in the office and writing 2,000 word features or the front page story uh, it involves hassling people and chasing the truth. This is what I enjoy doing. Uh, I've also, in my spare time, been to 23 countries. Prior to having my child, I went to 20 of them. When my daughter was 14 months old, and, sorry, actually, let me backtrack. I found out I was pregnant a week before I flew to India and then Sri Lanka. I was spending a month there. I said to my partner, I'm not married to because I don't want to. Women don't have to be married to have it all. I said to my partner, holy shit, I'm pregnant. We're going to India, what do I do? And he said, well, we're still going. And I said, good. Went to about five doctors, decided that we could go. Went and spent a month in India. I uh, wouldn't do it again when I was pregnant, but I still went because women can have it all. When my daughter was 14 months old, I decided that uh, we wanted to spend some time overseas again. So we took her to the US, Canada and Mexico for nine weeks and while we, obviously it was a, a change of scenery, 
the only time I couldn't have it all was when I got kicked out of a pub because the male bouncer said, you're not allowed a baby in here. Um, women can't have it all, and the serious side to this, if they're organised, if they're prioritised, and if they realise what they want to do and, and, and make the list and, and do it. I, I think I was saying, when I, uh, when I was pregnant, uh, when I found out I was pregnant, I went overseas. When I had the baby, I went overseas. I got promoted on maternity leave to chief reporter. And I thought, wow, I wasn't going to go back to the paper, but I couldn't knock back a promotion. I love my job. I wouldn't have it any other way. On weekends, I spend the weekend with my daughter cooking, uh, or walking, or running, or writing, talking to people on the phone about potential stories. I, I don't think I would have it any other way. Uh, when you talk about when women say you can't have it all because you're choosing to sacrifice things that you may or may not have done if you could have it all. So if I didn't have a child, I could paint. Well, I think I'd rather have my daughter with me than, than be painting or doing some meditation. Um, having it all depends on what having it all means to you. I love my exercise. I love my job. I love my partner and my baby. I love my friends. I've met some great friends at, at my job. I've also in touch with a lot of my school friends. I went to school here on the Gold Coast. Um, I love the colour of my own hair. I don't compare myself to anyone else and if I wanted something else, well, I'd go to the hairdresser. For me and my team, that's, what, that's what's having it all. Oh, and by the way, I'm not selfish. One organ, one organ, orgasm is enough for me. I was about to say organism, but orgasm. <laughs> Thank you very much to Shannon Willoughby. A woman who likes one organism. Organism. Oh, I'm having an organism. Oh, an organism. That's just kind of like a synthesis of creating a human in a really good way. An organism. Sorry. Sorry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the debate. It is now up to you to decide. So before we do that, I would like you to give simultaneous applause to appreciate the work of the women today that have come together to debate the topic, Women Can't Have It All, Yes and No. Ladies, this is a very hard part of the evening because most women, we, notoriously most women, we all have fairly low self-esteem, really, don't we, at the end of the day. Oh, so there's nothing like, if they don't take it personally, it's not you. Oh, don't you take it personally. Oh, don't take it personal. So now we're going to be in a situation where we're going to judge. You're going to be judged. And uh, it's not not. Not everyone can win. It's not like a Steiner school. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. Sometimes people have to lose. And I think if more people lose... <laughs> if more people lose, it would be a lot more interesting because they have more interesting things to say. Um, <laughs> lose. And they spoke good too. So, it is important though. So I, I do actually realise that I'd like to apologise. It's not personal, girls. It's just because it's how the audience felt and they didn't like you as much. <laughs> That's alright. So, we have a thing called a clapometer. Uh, which is comprised of you and the, the little flappy little hands you've got there. So, you know, give yourself a practice clap. Let's see, here you go. It's a practice. Very nice. Now, if you want to get really big, you might, I can see why, Ruth, but you are a fox. She's warmer inside. She's got her own genetic DNA. She knows what she's doing. Oh, she's clever. Oh, oh, I never saw that one coming, did you girls, eh? Yeah. I bet, I bet poor old Shannon's baby can't even clap yet. <laughs> Can she? Oh, yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, here for the Women's Health Wellbeing Expo, the debate for tonight, for the team that says that women can't have it all here. Come on, guys. I'd like to hear what you say.
our topic, wasn't it? For a lot of women here saying they've done very well, I think, saying they can't have it all, and I'm going home to get rid of one of the kids. <laughs> Sorry, kids, I can't have it all, so why do you have to go? Uh, I think it was a family survivor. Uh, I'm going to vote one of you off. I've been waiting and telling you which one it is, too. Uh, so right now, she'll know who it is, too. Uh, there's going to be no lifelines this time. She's had enough. Uh, oh, she's not here. It's all right. She wouldn't come to support me. Uh, only joking. Only joking. Only joking. We're in therapy. It's all right. Uh, so, okay. Saying that women can have it all. Katrina, Bridge, and Shannon, let's hear. Yeah.